Hey YouTube world, welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. I uh, last left off, I showed you guys that the plugs were in the parting planes. They were waxed and then I kind of took the rest of the evening off. It just kind of was lazy. Anyway, I've got the uh, PVA sprayed over everything and <clears throat> get ready to lay down some surfacing resin on uh, on everything that way we can start making some molds so again this is the AdTech ES 201 PC it's a, a white room temperature surfacing resin it kind of looks a lot like the white resin that Bob uses or used I'm not sure what he's his resin of choice is now but uh, they do say this is specifically a surfacing resin so it's got something in it that makes it a little bit better than the typical white resin it's a uh, 100 parts resin the 14 parts hardener by weight so uh, so yeah it's a little under yeah, I guess it's no oh, about 14 grams of hardener per 100 grams of resin so what I'll do is I'll put in 100 grams of resin here, a little over now, about 113, scoop a little bit of that out. This stuff is pretty heavy. 107. another cup real quick just to make sure the add another five grams of resin since I forgot to tear my scale before I started putting resin in the cup <laughs> doesn't take much to make up five grams of this stuff There we go. I'm gonna wipe off our stick with a paper towel. Tear that back out so we get back down to zero. Put our lid back on. Just a little bit. And now 14 grams of resin or hardener. There we go. So we get all that resin, I'm just going to use a tongue depressor and scrape the inside of the walls out to get the surface resin down there with the hardener. So the, the plan for today is to get the tops of these two molds made, the one on the right horizontal stab and, and the rudder. I've uh, kind of thought on it last night and I probably won't mold the other rudder just because there's, I mean, they're pretty much identical. So the only reason it would be good to mold the second one so you could make both rudders at the same time. But uh, 
there's enough stuff to mold on this airplane where having to let a mold set or wait for one part or one rudder to finish molding isn't that big of a deal. If I find out later that it would have been nice to have the second rudder, I can always mold it anyway. I believe the working time on this is about 20 to 30 minutes. So it's, you gotta work pretty quickly and I think it's about a two hour, uh, uh, a two hour, about two hours for it to get sticky to where it just leaves a fingerprint mark in it, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't leave a, doesn't pull any up. So now we got our resin mixed up. I'll get you guys zoomed in here and we'll start brushing some stuff on. And I'm just working from the point furthest away from the edge of the, the table that way I can I don't get my shirt stuck in the in the resin. And putting it about, oh, I don't know, about a good two to three inch flange around the, the actual stab. The reason I chose this resin is because this is actually what we use at work to uh, make some of our modification parts for our King Airs and now Dash 8 series of full scale, full scale airplanes. And the guys said it's inexpensive, which is pretty, I mean, 70 bucks for a gallon of tooling resin is actually a pretty good price. And uh, if it's good enough for full scale industry, it's good enough for, for this stuff. So that's what they recommended. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll buy some and see how it works out. If I don't like it, they said they'd buy it off of me. So <laughs> apparently they like this stuff. And so far, I've after making the mold for the Falkworth 190 spinner, it is some pretty good stuff. And where the uh, pivot shaft is for the elevator, I'm actually gonna, that whole thing is gonna get molded in there. That way when I go to, to put the internal structure in, that pivot shaft is on the same plane, or is in the same position every time I get ready to, to make a stab. And then the, the internal bulkheads for the for the pivot shaft uh, mount and all that for the servo and everything, it's all machined. It'll be <clears throat> machined out of aluminum, and uh, it's really only three parts. You got the one box structure that the pivot shaft goes into, and it rides in a couple of ball bearings. Then you got the control arm that mounts inside the box structure into the pivot shaft that the servo link can just connect to. And then there's the the servo mounts, which will either, I'm gonna have it cut out for two, so you can run two servos on the st each stab, or you can run a, a really, just a single large servo. Kind of an odd feeling after all the work putting into this thing covering it with a bunch of epoxy
hopefully some of you guys out there are actually getting ready to get some fun in here lately. It's been raining the past two days here and I found a leak in our roof right above our living room sofa. So when I walked in last night after making those videos, my sofa was just soaking wet. So that's going to be my uh, project for the rest of the week other than getting these molds made up today. I mentioned also that I'm gonna make up a little table for that kind of rolls around that's big enough to hold about a four foot long roll of fiberglass cloth and I'm gonna put a nice little tabletop kind of like Fort Micah top or something on it and that's actually gonna be my cloth cutting table and it's gonna hold my vacuum bag the pump and everything as well on the bottom of it so when I get the parts for that cut out I'll, uh, I'll make a video when it's made up and everything showing you guys that I think it'll make life a little easier having a dedicated table for just cutting cloth on that way uh, I'm not going around looking for somewhere to cut cloth I'm gonna make it just short enough to where it'll just barely fit under the, the table that I'm working on right now or the bench that I'm working on I was told by the guys at work not to worry too much if you can see your brush strokes in this stuff because they say it's hard enough to wear as long as there's just a really really minute thin layer on there they said it it's fine it'll it'll hold up for a couple of dozen parts or so uniform coat over everything. I'm going to go through and get some of the really thick parts just kind of blend them into the, <clears throat> the thinner areas where you can see through the part a little bit. And that 100 grams of resin is pretty much done so I'm going to mix up another 100 grams or so and finish the uh, the perimeter of the stab parting planes and then get that rudder done as well. I've also got to lay up a uh, another Falkwolf spinner but I'll I'll do that on the, the video where I'm actually laying cloth and whatnot on this part on these molds that way. I only have to mix resin once. My uh Falkwell spinner that I did the test layup on, it got a little smushed when I was pulling it out because I didn't, that US Composites resin I was using, it takes a little bit longer to fully harden, about two or three days, and I tried to pull it out the day after, so uh, it got a little smushed in the process, but at least it let me kind of get an idea of what I can and can't do with that particular mold. <coughs> So it wasn't a complete loss. <clears throat> I 
and that spinner may still be usable I'm gonna kind of play around with it put it in the the backing plate heat it up and let it cool off and do that a couple of times and see if it'll go back to its shape right now it's kind of oval shaped instead of round at the backing plate According to the scale, there's still about six grams of resin in here, so I'm just gonna use my stir stick earlier and uh, scrape some of that resin out. Again, since this has got a mix epoxy on, I'm just going to wipe it off. <clears throat> then I'm going to set it to the side and I'll use it again next time. <clears throat> that way we don't get any harder hardener in our big gallon can of resin and end up ruining it. I don't know if I've ever told you guys the history about the about my F-14 obsession. I mean, about like everybody that started out with Top Gun. Surprise, surprise. But um, this is actually my 12th F-14 model. I mean, I'm kind of a, I guess you could call them a little obsessed. But um, it's my 12th, also the largest. I, uh, I've had a bunch of them. I've had a couple of the Great Plains F-16s, which I know are kind of in a completely different, a different style airplane than this, considering it's a prop. But the Great Plains, I've had a few, two or three of those. I've had a, two foamies, and I've also had two of the Philip Avon's um, fiberglass fuselages that I've pretty much got to the point where they were ready to have equipment installed and everything and I sold those. I've had a very early uh, DCU Composites F-14. I've had the Model Airplane News plans. I've got, I still have a Philip Avons or the Hobby Barn plans now of the F-14 that he built and I've actually got a one, that's a one tenth scale so it's 80 inch wingspan but I've got that fuselage and tail section in my grandmother's attic down in South Carolina that is uh, it's just about ready to be fiberglass and all so that's I've kind of been playing with the idea of possibly taking that out of storage finishing it up and doing a one tenth scale all composite that would be good for uh, it would probably be good for 
like 90 millimeter fans around that size. <clears throat> and it's still a fairly decent size airplane. It's still IMAA legal with an 80 inch wingspan. So that'd be another fun little project that I may look into doing as well. Too many wants to do's and not enough time to do. Or in some cases, not enough money to do. <laughs> now, a lot of people are wondering about the time frame to finish this airplane. Um, I don't know if it'll ever be completely done. Done. I, uh, I'm really happy with how this one's turned out. And even when these the airframe molds are done, I've got to make the plugs for the missile rails and the, the Phoenix racks and the bombs and the missiles and all that good stuff. So, I mean, there's still a lot left to do to the airplane. Because I'm my intentions are to hopefully have a full set of armament for the airplane. So, bombs, missiles, uh, pods, fuel tanks. And pretty much if the full scale had it, I'm going to try and make it for this thing. Not to mention I've also got all the cockpit stuff to do. And and then then and then there's the, the landing gear and the canopy frame detailing work that I'm going to try and I'm going to try and do all that stuff as well. So I don't know if it'll ever truly be done. But it'll uh, I would like to have the prototype airframe done and flying by December of next year. I know it's kind of a long way off, but it was December 7th of 71 is when the Tomcat flew, and I believe next year is its 41st anniversary of that date. So I think it'd be kind of cool to have the airplane flying and possibly go up to uh, the Calverton facility up in Calverton, New York, and fly the airplane up there on that day. Kind of be a cool little tribute to one of the coolest airplanes ever designed and built, I think. When I sprayed the PVA on this, I made sure I went well outside of where I was pointing on putting the the edge of the mold and the fiberglass cloth. I went about three inches on the outside of it. So there's a there's a lot of PVA on here. And I even then I only use about two ounces. It doesn't take much for that stuff to cover very well. All right, so there's a stab. Move the camera and zoom in down there on the rudder for you guys. If y'all would like to watch me make the parting planes and actually like trace it out and cut it and everything, shoot me a comment. I've got plenty of uh, plenty of them to make. I just didn't know if you guys would be interested in seeing the same old wash, rinse, repeat process that Bob has shown plenty of times. I pretty much showed you guys the, the main difference with the body filler compared to clay. But if you're interested, let me know. I already had one request about buying a set of molds. If you're willing to pay the price, I'm willing to sell them. <laughs> Just don't expect it to be cheap. <laughs> I got a lot of time invested in this airplane. I mean, it started two years ago back in July on the actual construction and the thought processing behind the design and the CAD work and all started, well, the CAD work started about a year before that and the thought processing started about 15 years before that. So, I mean, this is, almost a 
well, it's over a 17 years old project for myself. I mean, it's been kind of something I've been thinking about doing pretty much ever since I got in the hobby and kind of knew what I was doing. And time's not cheap, as many of us know. I believe I showed you guys a test layup I did for these things out of uh, just on a piece of monocoated plywood. Um, now that they've sat for about three weeks, I still don't have any uh, fabric print through from the two ounce cloth or the three quarter ounce cloth. So I'm just going to use a two ounce cloth initially on this stuff. And I'll probably do four layers of two ounce, another four layers of six ounce, and then a couple of layers of the. Uh, that heavy 17 and a half ounce I have on the for, on the rudder and then I'll use probably some 16 ounce stuff on the stabs and I'm just gonna build that up for probably four or five layers and then I'm gonna take that fiberglass tape I have and put probably another five layers around the perimeter so around the parting point area just to build up the, the flange thickness and then probably put two more layers of that 16 ounce cloth onto the over that. I I had intended on buying some pour over, parova, however you want to pronounce it, which is basically just little porous fiberglass beads, kind of like a glass spheres, but they've got a lot of little holes in them. So uh, you actually encapsulate and then you fill the glass beads with epoxy resin. And a lot of guys use that for making some smaller molds like this, like this rudder. And then just making like a, a bathtub basically around your part and around the parting planes. And then once you get a couple layers of the glass cloth laid down, they put that pour over with, mixed with epoxy inside that bathtub until it's just completely full to the top of your parting planes. And a lot of guys I've seen do it about four or five inches thick. And what it does is it, just adds a whole ton of uh, volume to the part which makes it darn near impossible for the thing to, to warp. And that's one thing I've kind of I thought about doing on this but the stuff's hard to come by here in the States. It's really popular overseas and the guy wanted to he originally said they'd sell it to me at 50 uh, 50 pounds of the stuff and you're probably thinking holy crap that's a lot but it's a lot, but the stuff on uh, one pound only fills about 100 cubic inches. So I mean, you're not talking about a whole lot of volume for so much, so much weight. Now I'd probably use 50 pounds of this stuff just on the tail molds and maybe the wings. But uh, he originally said 50 pounds, and then decided that he didn't want to sell it in 50 pounds. He wanted to sell it in a whole uh, 125 pound bag, like he gets it and just a little bit more than I was wanting to pay for something that I probably didn't really need to begin with. So I decided to pass and just keep doing this B1 Bob's way. Now the rudder is pretty much done now. The uh, horizontal stab is done. There's still little parts, little places that are a little thin that I'm gonna uh, fill in with a little bit more of this that I have left over. But um, pretty much that's the first layer of surface coat on the first two parts to be molded. With probably another 30 parts to go. It's gonna be a, be a long drawn out process. So plenty of videos to come. So with that, I'm going to quit boring you guys with me just rambling on about useless nonsense.
and uh, yeah, when I get ready to start putting the way in the fiberglass cloth down and all, I'll start up another video. So until then, you guys have a good afternoon and get some flying done if you have the opportunity. See you next time.